Good day, and welcome to another segment of A Week at the Plot. A first segment of A Week at the Plot, and a Monday segment of A Week at the Plot. It's really quite a lovely day today. It's been very sunny, but quite breezy. Now it's a bit overcast, but that's quite nice for working outside, and that breeze is rather fresh too, which is lovely. Um, I think we in London are over our frosts. There could be further frosts, but if I look at the forecast over the coming four weeks, I can't see anything that dips down to low enough that would give us a frost down here. However, I'm going to keep an eye on the forecasts because if I see that it's going to be two or one degrees in our area overnight, then I would need to think if I had anything outside that was precious about fleecing them. However, we don't have anything growing at the moment outside that is that precious. We do have something growing inside and I'll show you in a minute. But outside, we've got our moisture and our peas, which are weather hardy. We've got the Marvel of Four Seasons. I mean, you know, it says it in the name. It is a Marvel of Four Seasons. It will grow throughout the four seasons of the year. So that lettuce is absolutely fine. We've got no germination yet in the beetroot or the turnips that I sowed last week. But hopefully by the end of this week, we will see some germination there. But again, I wouldn't worry about those seedlings for frost. We've got some other seedlings that I need to pot on, as you know, on the bench, uh, which are mainly Brussels sprouts, dazzling blue kale and Portuguese cabbage. Again, they're not going to be affected by frost. So we here do not have anything that is going to be affected by frost. The only thing that might be is the potato shoots of the Colleen early potatoes once they come above ground. But what we will be doing is turning compost over them as they grow. So hopefully, should there be any frost, which I don't think there will be, they won't get touched. The other thing is because they're in a raised bed, the raised bed is always a degree or two above the rest of the, um, the ground level temperature. So even if we did go down to one or two unexpectedly, if they were coming above, then they wouldn't actually be um, be frostbitten. So, you know, that's that's really good to, to know. We just had a plane going over then, so I just paused the video for a moment. The one thing that I want to do this afternoon is get on with some work with the wooden grow house. You may have seen, if you watched a week at the plot last week, that I'm going to put metal mesh on top because I want to use it more as a an open grow house rather than the grow house that is going to heat up. Normally the grow house has got a Perspex panel at the top. Ours broke away many years ago and we haven't really used it but now it's down here at the plot and I'm going to use it for putting our brassica seedlings into because what I want to make sure with our brassica seedlings is that they're out of the way of pigeons because pigeons do like brassica seedlings and even though there's plenty now for pigeons to eat. When I got down here today, I did see them on top of the brassicas next to the shed here, munching away. They flew off quite quickly and they're not really going to do much damage to those because they're all going to seed now anyway, but they would damage our seedling. So I want to make sure that I've got a frame that I can put them into, the seedlings into, that don't get pecked by pigeons. So I'm going to do the metal mesh on the top because then if a pigeon does land on it, it um, it's supporting it. Because I did think about putting some uh, mesh, uh, uh, nylon mesh or, or fleece at the top. But of course, if I do do that, then if a, a, a pigeon lands on it, it could just sort of tear that mesh. So I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is pause the video again. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. There's a lot of planes being kicked out from Heathrow today. Let me just pause you for a moment. And we're back. So what I'm going to be doing today is actually adding this eco wood treatment to the grow house. The grow house is wooden. It has been treated previously. It's pressure treated wood. And this eco wood treatment is um, great for pressure treated wood. This actually is a, it comes in a powder form. I've got the box here. 
So there's a powder in here. And basically you use, I think this is 200 grams in here for, oh, let me look at the back. One gallon. No, let me look at the, where's the paper? There's the paper. Uh, helpful hints, not that side, that side. There we are. One gallon is 40 grams. And this is actually 40 grams because it's a one gallon box. So this is powder in here. But the good thing about the powder is if you weren't going to be using a gallon relatively quickly, what you could do is you could measure out the amount of grams and then reduce the amount of water that you add to the grams. So you could, you know, reseal this packet basically and use it over time. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up the whole lot because there are a few other things, both mine here that are wood and also on our um, communal plot that need to be treated with a wood treatment. So I'm going to mix up the whole lot and then I'll show you what I'm doing. Oh, first, let me go into the polytunnel. There's another plane. In yesterday's segment of a week at the plot, I was bemoaning that we didn't have any germination in our tomatoes. And I come down today, germination, 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 germination. So we've got four red ox heart that have germinated. And if I remember correctly, the red ox heart were pretty quick to germinate or, or earlier to germinate, certainly than the other tomatoes last year. So, fingers crossed, it looks as though we don't have hinky compost. We've just had cold weather, which has put off the germination of the seeds until the weather started improving. We'll wait a few days and see whether any of the others germinate and whether the red and green lettuce have germinated or do germinate. Um, but I think I will be sowing some more salad leaves anyway. But I was really pleased to come in here earlier and see that these tomatoes have germinated. Fingers crossed now they grow and fingers, 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 fingers and toes crossed. We don't have blight like we did last year. Doesn't look very appetizing. But of course it's not for drinking it's a wood preservative so that's it all mixed up now and now i'm going to start adding it to the grow house with a paintbrush of course I've now given all the wood two coats, including the trays, the shelves rather, two sets of shelves here, because of course this is going to be open. So I've made sure that all the inside wood has been well impregnated as well. And it seems to be drying to this sort of silvery color here, which is what it says on the package as well. I'm just going to put this back into its place now job done all the wood areas have had i would say two or three coats and we'll see how it dries what color it dries to but as i say i think it's going to be this sort of silvery white which isn't far off where it was already anyway and then later this week or next week we'll sort out the mesh and also sort out the catch here at the moment i'm keeping the doors well shut with one and a half heavy bricks down here so that these doors can't just swing open in the wind. But yeah, really pleased to have that job done. Glad to have got the preservative onto the grow house and so glad that I've seen some tomatoes that have germinated. I mean, I'm so, so chuffed about that. You can't imagine how chuffed I am. 
So I just hope that with the tomatoes, the others will start germinating as well. And as I say, we'll see if they will in, um, I would have say within a week or so, we'll know whether the others are and I'll have plenty time to re-sow. As I said earlier, the weather looks as though it's going to be getting warmer. And obviously that means that the polytunnel will start getting warmer too. And later this week, I've just had a look, we may start harvesting the carrots in the polytunnel as well. But one more thing before I go, I've been given a grape, um, Lake Mont grape. It's a white grape. And um, I think that's going to stay in a pot and get ready for our house move, whether that be this year or next year. I don't think it's going to go in the ground. There's a quieter plane going over at the moment. Sometimes we do get the smaller quieter planes um, and they're rather easy to deal with. Um, but I can hear a rumble of a big plane taking off at Heathrow. It's most probably going to come this way. So I'm going to say goodbye for this segment of A Week at the Plot and I'll see you again very soon. I'm so pleased those tomatoes have germinated. See you soon. Bye. Good day and job done. Very kindly, one of our fellow plot holders loaned me their staple gun and gave me staples. So I've been able to staple the two bits of metal, two bits of mesh up here to the body of the grow house, which is terrific. I might, it sort of overlaps here, the two pieces, so I might just do something with some cable ties that I've got to just link these together, maybe at three points. Though I, in reality, I don't think anything is going to be able to get under there and get in. Um, I mean, a bamboo will, but a bird isn't going to. And the good thing is this just feels so stable that if a, if a bird does land on here, it's not going to damage the top or pull the staples out like if I had done this as a piece of fleece underneath or some netting underneath. I think a bird landing on netting or fleece would have just ripped the fleece or the netting. So this has now, this grow house has now become a tool for the allotment and I'm really looking forward now to potting on our brassica seedlings and getting them in here. Still need to sort out the catch here. I've got the, the bolt, but not the actual wooden catch that goes over. And that sort of stops these two doors opening. As you know, at the bottom of here, I've got some bricks at the moment to stop the doors opening in the wind. But yeah, really, really pleased with this. And I'm going to get on with another job today as well. A job that many people will go, oh.
So yeah, another of the jobs I'm doing this afternoon is simply weeding. Not a favourite of most, but really important. The less, or the fewer rather, weeds you have, and the fewer slugs and snails will be around because they'll have less place to hide. And also, like down here, if you've got crops which are clearly either past their best or beginning to die off, take those off too. As well as uncovering a few weeds, by doing that you're taking away decaying matter which will be an attractant to slugs and snails if it's left there. So I'm going to carry on with this bed now and I'll see you again very very soon. Bye! Good day! Now we've got the grow house sorted with the mesh at the top. I'm going to be putting on these brassicas. So here we've got Portuguese cabbage, which really do need potting on. You can see they're looking quite pale. That means that they've basically used up all the nutrients in the compost down there, and they need to be potted on and have fresh compost. At the back here, we've got, I think about nine or 12 Brussels sprouts. This is from seed that was, I think best before 2015 so seven years out of date i think i sowed about 15 seeds and we've got maybe 20 seeds and we've got i think there's 12 plants there and then at the front here we've got dazzling blue kale and we've got plenty in there i think some of these and some of these will be going to the plant sale at Hanwell Carnival to sell in a couple of months time. But before that, they need to be potted on. So that's what I'm gonna get on and do. First lot of brassicas pricked out and potted up for this year. At the back, we've got Brussels sprouts. There are 12. We don't need 12. So if all of those do, we can give some plants to other people. At the front we've got dazzling blue kale there's 18 of those again we don't need all of those so um, if we have any of those spare if they all grow well and we have any spare then they can go to somebody else and i've also got some other dazzling blue kale to give to other people i've put them into this tray of water there's no holes in this tray I filled it up with water to give them a really good drenching from below. And now I'm going to get on with the Portuguese cabbage.
there we have it Portuguese cabbage in the top and on the second level we've got dazzling blue kale and Brussels sprouts and hopefully with this mesh it'll keep the pigeons off I mean with that mesh it will keep the pigeons off and it also won't get too hot obviously which we were talking about last week so yeah job done see you again soon bye Good day, with a bit of soaring and a lot of brute force and ignorance. I've dismantled the frame that was here, the one that was quite decrepit and rotten. And I'm replacing it with this pole. And in front of this pole is a cultivated blackberry. And I am going to train it out from the pole to the sides here and there's another pole just off screen here I've positioned that it's obviously not quite straight whether it'll end up being straight I don't know but there's no way that I can use this post driver to beat that in on my own so I'm going to see if somebody else is here and if they are, I'm going to ask them if they can help me. They're a bit taller than I am. So I may have to stand on a brick or two or a slab or two. Um, but yeah, I will go and see if they're here. If they're not here, I'll do this another day. But yeah, I'm quite happy with how that is going to sit. Not quite centred onto the polytunnel door. But you know what? I'm not going to bother about that. So in the end, I have done it myself. The person I wanted to find, I couldn't. And I just thought, have a go, Paul. I'm sure my shoulders will feel it tomorrow. But actually I did it in quite a balanced way and made sure that my back was nice and straight and it was being lifted. The, the post driver was being lifted straight as well. And you know what? That's pretty sturdy. Quite happy with that. Having a closer look at this thornless blackberry. The main stem is here up. So I want to pull this in to the post and I'm going to use rubber tree ties but because it's a bit of a distance away I'm going to put one rubber tree tie around and then use another one to sort of pull it in let me just do it that makes sense then I hope Oh, you can just about see that. So I didn't want to pull this in too tight, so I've done it right up here. Now what I'm going to do is look at all these laterals. If I move it in front of the 
camera all these laterals I want to see how high they are because I want to sort of tie them back to the post but then bring them along as well to the next post does that make sense I think it does and then if I just move you up this growing tip here I can continue tying into this post and in fact let's do a close-up not sure if you can see here 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 where the growth is coming so this is where flowers will come from to give us lovely blackberries yum job sort of done so I've got a couple of laterals coming out there and a couple going across there this has been tied up obviously there's a bit above as well which I'll tie in I notice there's another bit shooting off here <laughs> so I'm gonna have to put another line in I don't have any wire so I've used a plastic cord that I have which will do for the time being and because this may not be permanent I've tied it in with I've tied the laterals of the blackberry in with twine rather than um, um, anything stronger so we'll just see how it grows this year but as you've seen there's quite a few flowers on here buds and growth coming of course now I've tied it up th this side is all facing that way um, because the way it was growing it was growing this way because this is where most of the Sun comes from the camera side so these are if what we'll see over the coming weeks is the growth will start coming forward I think rather than um, as it is at the moment where it's pointing back on the laterals but yeah happy with that just glad to have got that done and hopefully we'll have lots of blackberries later on in the year fingers crossed i'm going to leave it there for this week's a week at the plot i'm chuffed with what i've got done this week particularly pricking out and potting on those brassicas and sorting out the grow house with the mesh and i'm glad to have got rid of that um, arbor that was there and just getting in the way and getting the the blackberry tied up just pleased about that so yeah quite chuffed i've been into the poly as well and i've noticed that we've got some germination in our courgettes one courgette has germinated we've also got germination in our amish paste and our black crim tomatoes so it looks as though they're they're sort of you know the warmth is coming on and they're beginning to grow which is or germinate which is great and I've also noticed this morning that the first of the potatoes has broken ground on the raised bed that's the Colleen potatoes so yeah pleased about that and as I say I don't think we're going to be having any frost so I don't need to worry too much about the um, the growth there I'll see how the others develop over the coming sort of days, week, and then I'll, I'll heave up the compost around the growing tips maybe in a week's time because the weather is getting warmer. It gets a bit colder again on Monday or Tuesday, gets back down to normal, but again, no frosts, uh, fingers crossed. Right, I will leave it there. And I'll see you again very soon for some further segments of A Week at the Plot if you're on Planet Vegetaria or for another upload of A Week at the Plot if you're on YouTube. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.